Initial and final value theorems explained, some examples and proof. Here we want to find the initial and final values of a function or signal uh, x of t as a function of time if we only know its Laplace transform x of s in s domain. So the idea is we would like to avoid the need uh, to uh, use the inverse Laplace transform to find and figure out x of t from x of s first in order to be able to find the initial value and final values of this time domain function or signal. We want to be able to directly compute these values from or by using the Laplace transform x of s. This has a lot of application in say circuit analysis uh, and circuit and systems. What is the initial value? So by initial value for the time for the function we are referring to the value of the function at time zero and for final value we are talking about uh, the uh, value of that function when time approaches infinity or we refer to it as x of infinity so that refers to this uh, limit of the value all right, uh, so let's uh, start with just a uh, few examples. Let's say in example one, uh, let's say you're given this simple Laplace transform for a time domain function, x of s is uh, s plus one over s times s plus two in denominator. Okay, just uh, conventionally in a brute force fashion, if you want to uh, deal with this problem, figure out these initial and final value, the first thing you do is you would say, all right, let me just figure out the correspond time domain function that is corresponding to this Laplace transform, and then from there I will proceed. To do that, you will use uh, partial fraction expansion. Uh, okay. So using partial fraction expansion, uh, you would end up with saying x of s, is equal to something divided by s plus something divided by s plus 2. That's what you would do. And if you uh, compute that for the value in the numerator, you will end up with 0.5 and 0.5. And it's obvious, if you multiply and try to get back to where you were, then you would end up with seeing that the coefficient for s in the numerator is 1 with these two coefficients and also uh, the plus one appears as well. Okay, now things are straightforward because the inverse of Laplace transform of this guy, so inverse Laplace transform of this guy result in x of t being a simple uh, 0.5 ut, that's for the first part, and 0.5 e to the minus 2t ut. Or you can simplify it into 0.5 uh, 1 plus e to the minus 2t uh, ut. All right, then with this x of t, life is easy. You would say, okay, now that I have this, x of 0 is simply uh, e to the 0 is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 times 0 0.1 is 1. So you would say x of 0 is just uh, 1. And you would say um, x, uh, uh, the limit of x of t, when t goes to infinity, which is represented by x infinity in this case, is also the limit of this function, 0.5, 1 plus e to the minus 2t ut, when t goes to infinity, and obviously e to the minus 2t when t goes to infinity goes to 0, so you would end up with just 0.5. Okay, great. So we found x0 and x infinity. Uh, but in this process, we had to deal with the computation of the inverse Laplace transform using the partial fraction expansion, and in this case, it's an easy uh, 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 Laplace transform for this given function, so it wasn't difficult, but uh, it's not as easy always. Another example, uh, let's say, is 
when you're given, let's say, this function, x of s is uh, 1 over s, s minus 2 in the denominator. Okay, so same idea. Uh, we use uh, partial fraction expansion. Okay, and we end up with x of s equal to uh, 0.5 over s uh, minus 2 minus 0.5 over s, just partial fraction expansion. You can see that uh, if you try to go back to where you were, then you would end up with 0.5s and the negative 0.5s in the numerator. They cancel out, and also you would end up with minus 2 times minus 0.5, which results in the 1 that you had in your numerator. So proceeding with the same way, uh, Laplace, inverse Laplace transform of these guys resulting x of t equal to 1 over 2, um, e to the 2t minus 1, ut. And of course, uh, we need to define, we need to deal with the uh, ranges uh, that, or the bounds uh, that would make this valid because of the fact that now you're dealing with a unbounded time domain function when t goes to infinity and that makes things um, uh, not normal. In this scenario, what you see is, okay, you can see that um, the uh, x of infinity, let's say the same idea, limit of x of t when t goes to infinity, which is represented by x of infinity, is, um, well, is approaching infinity, is infinity, because this, this function is expanding forever. The value of it is going, is becoming larger and larger as t goes on. So I'll show you that we have a problem here. We have to be careful. Of course, the value of this function at time 0 is uh, 0. So x of 0 is obviously 0 looking at this time domain function that we found. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight this. Now, um, let's see how we can find these values without the need to deal with the inverse Laplace transform computation as we had to do in example 1 and 2 in a brute force fashion. So what is that? Let's first deal with the uh, final value. Um, let's first deal with the final value theorem. Basically, we want to find uh, the x, uh, the value of function x at time t goes to infinity. Okay, so for that, let's say for final value theorem. All right, so assuming um, Laplace transform of both x of t and Laplace transform of uh, derivative of x with respect to time exist and are definable. And assuming also, s times x of s, where x of s is the Laplace transform of x of t, has poles um, that are uh, all on the left-hand side of the s-plane, or left plane, um, in s-domain, or on origin in s-domain s equal to 0 is acceptable. So assuming these are the case, then I can proceed with computing Laplace transform of a derivative of x of t with respect to t, which is just basically according to the definition of Laplace transform integral from 0 minus to infinity d uh, of x with respect to time, uh, e to the minus st dt, which is just to simplify it, um, is just integral from 0 minus to infinity e to the minus st um, d of x. Okay. W well, just keep this in mind and think of it this way. Um, if I say, 
um, um, what is the limit of this so let's say if I name this as a or B however you want to name it just assign a name to it limit of B when s goes to 0 or s is 0 is just integral 0 minus to infinity uh, d of x which means is equal to x infinity minus x 0 minus so for now have this in mind why this is important because it shows there is a relationship between uh, the value of uh, function x at time infinity and the Laplace transform of its derivative so uh, it means I should be able to compute the final value which is the value of x at infinity using the derivative of the Laplace transform of the derivative of the function okay so let's proceed with um, further expanding this so I'm gonna do that integral from 0 minus to infinity e to the uh, minus st d of x t is just simply using integral trick is simply xt e to the minus st 0 minus to infinity minus integral 0 minus to infinity x of t e to the uh, d of e to the minus st with respect to time okay so the first portion of this guy here uh, obviously assuming um, the boundedness and assuming these uh, assumptions we make at the beginning are valid then when t, t goes to infinity e to the minus st goes to zero so I can say a limit of uh, this thing is equal to limit of x of t e to the minus st when t goes to infinity minus x of zero negative e to the minus s zero okay this thing goes to zero and so the whole thing here is just uh, zero minus x of zero negative um, the second portion here so let me rewrite this whole thing uh, because I know the first portion is just simply uh, neg minus x zero minus so minus x zero minus the second portion there is a de to the minus st resulting in minus s coming out and then multiplied by negative side becomes a positive s and then integral 0 minus to infinity um, x of t e to the minus st dt this is obviously the Laplace transform of x of t by definition so it is just x of s so the outcome of this whole thing is s x of s minus x zero okay now things are interesting because with just a simple process we showed that this whole thing which is the Laplace transform of the derivative of x of t is equal to this outcome we also showed that if um, s goes to zero for this thing the outcome becomes this so what I can say is all right uh, I'll take this and I say limit of s x of s so limit of uh, s x of s uh, when s goes to 0 minus x minus the value of the time at time 0 is equal to according to this thing here finite final value minus x 0 these two cancel out so I can say the final value time domain value is equal to just limit of s goes to 0 s x of s okay so this is the final value theorem assuming these assumptions are valid now um, think of it in the context of example 1 and 2 that is provided here so for example 1 now instead of computing uh, the Laplace tra inverse Laplace transform of the function I'm gonna use this so I'm gonna say x at infinity is equal to 
uh, limit of s, x of s is this guy. So it is s times s plus 1 over s divide over s and times s plus 2 in denominator when s goes to 0. These two cancel out. So the outcome is just 0.5. And that is exactly what we found here. So in a brute force fashion, we found it. And now, using this final value theorem, we also found it. So, nice. And that is valid because, for example, one, um, these two, these conditions are okay, meaning that the Laplace transform of the signal or function exists, the Laplace transform of the derivative exists, the poles of s times s, x of s, which is just simply s plus 1 divided by s plus 2, is there is only one pole, which is pole at minus 2. That pole is on left-hand plane, left-hand side of the s-plane, so satisfied this. Great. For example, two, that's the problem that I want to highlight. So same idea, x of infinity is just limit of s. This time your x of s is um, 1 over s, s minus 2 when s goes to 0. So if you just go ahead like this, you would say this cancel out with that, and obviously this becomes minus 0.5. Well, that's a problem. So you are saying, using final value theorem, the va final value of signal or function x at time infinity is negative 0.5, while in the brute force fashion, you just showed that it is infinite. Uh, so there is a discrepancy here, and that makes sense because actually in example 2, um, this requirement is violated because it says the pole should be on the left-hand plane, and you can see that the s minus 2 for the x of s is not in the left-hand side. It's actually there is a pole, s plus 2 is on the right hand side side of s plane um, and this is not acceptable okay so that's the problem meaning that we cannot use the final value theorem if you use it in this case it will result in a wrong outcome um, hope this is clear i will um, deal with proving and also showcasing the initial value theorem in a separate video. Thank you.